Giving all praise unto Abashim Hashai, Abashim Bukwa HaKodash, double honors unto the apostles of Great Millstone, and honest your brothers that be pushing this truth in sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. And above I, body, you're coming out here to give you this truth for the grace and mercy of Yahweh, Abashim Hashai, Abashim Bukwa HaKodash. It's going to be a relatively quick video, and we're going to go into the topic of the Red Hebrew Edomite and how he has made the world as a wilderness. And what we want to do is we want to take a look at this graph over here. Graphs are beautiful. Graphs are important because you can put thousands and thousands of points or data points, thousands of data points into one graph and show you a trend. And I suppose this is the trend that best describes, in my humble opinion, the Red Hebrew Edomite. And how through lies and deception, which the scripture speaks about, how he was going to go forth for the four corners of the earth and via lies and deception going to deceive many and ultimately he was going to conquer the world <clears throat> and the point i'm trying to use here is um through greed uh through a an, an, a, a spirit that can never be satisfied they've used lies and deception and they've made the world as a wilderness and that makes sense if a person is insatiable check that word out that was going to be the ultimate end or be of them being insatiable if they have the control over the earth and so too we see from the book of Job 9 and 24, the earth is been given into the hand of the wicked. Cover the faces of the judges thereof. Who are the real judges? The book of Psalms 83 says, they've taken care of the counsel against thine anointed, who's the anointed. Psalms 50 and 5 says that the children of Israel are the anointed of the Lord. Therefore the anointed, which is the children of Israel, the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, our faces have been taken away from the position of aristocracy that we had within the history books. So the idea that the Red Hebrew Edomites always been in power is deeply embedded within people's psyche. And when he comes out with a particular idea, a lie, a deception, a move to take away your resources, ergo, you shall have everything, you shall have nothing and you shall be happy about it. When he comes out with a move like that, people eat it up. Okay, People eat it up because they believe the lies that surround those particular philosophies and ideas of which this zero... Um, I'm gonna. Have, I have to find a. Oh, it will come to me. This will, will deliver it to me. <clears throat> a way of a snazzy way of saying it on the YouTube. The zero. Um, two parts oxygen, one part carbon. Myth. Is um, is re really quite detrimental to life, right? This this is quite detrimental to life upon the face of the planet, and maybe, maybe in a very sadistic way, the Red Hebrew Eater might knows that because we know part of the agenda is to reduce the the world's um population so we're going to look at this graph and we're going to look i'm not going to play the video for you but i'm, I'm going to give you a bit of an excerpt of what i remember from the video but it's it's a pretty damn good video by a, a scientist that studied this stuff for a very long time so that video it briefs everything that we're seeing here on screen okay there's there's what the most has created this atmospheric Two parts oxygen, one part carbon atoms there. Okay, so 3,000 is, I mean, they got the, the, the crazy numbers over there, the millions of years bullshit. But obviously you could you could just assume that that's, you know, just ignore that time, right? That Just just ignore that time span because I mean, Esau sometimes, he'll give you the truth one minute and he'll give you a lie the next minute. So we're just looking at the graph. We're just looking at, the graph and we see that there is an optimum a goldilocks point right i wouldn't go with the primus thing that they put on there just ignore that just look at the optimum for plants that's what we are interested in right everything else except for today within this graph is 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 misleading lies and deception because we understand from the scriptures that the earth is a little over twelve thousand years old and you know, you want to go into these different realms of, of studying where they create history and call it prehistory. It's like, brother, like, how did we sit down in the classroom and, and accept that within our mind's eye? Like, prehistory? What the hell is prehistory? It's just history. It wasn't a point when people decided to start writing things down. They've been, Jake's been, you know, people have been writing stuff down for, for the longest time. What are you talking about prehistory? The hell does that mean? Okay, because Esau had to invent something in order for this um, evolution, which goes back into what's the ideas that they have out here. There's, there's a word for it. It goes into the words. There's a word for it. It's going to come to me. The Spirit's going to reveal it to me. 
it goes into Edomite supremacy, but there's another word for it. There's another word for it. Right? If it comes back to mind, you know, the spirit will reveal it. <clears throat> but there's a particular word for it where, you know, if you've got evolution, then the most optimum, according to them, the most optimum type of a human being is going to be an Edomite. That's what they don't tell you in these classrooms. They say, look, everybody, quote unquote, came from Africa, right? And what did they become? They became Edomites. The most optimum or the most developed is going to be an Edomite, right? That's what these Edomites are trying to tell you with the whole evolution thing. Okay, it's, uh, it's I think it's, it's a word that begins with H. Somebody could post it on a, on, on on in the thing, um, um, in 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 the comment section. So, so we're interested in the optimum Goldilocks point right there, right? And in science, when you're dealing with engineering, when you're dealing with science, let's use airplanes because that's kind of like my hobby at the minute right now. You know, I, you know, I did the hobby with the cars and everything, and now going to everything about that, and then now we're doing the 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 studying. You know, aero aerofoils and lift and all of them, all of them things there, right? So when you're dealing with lift, okay, you put your hand outside the car whilst your car is driving, right? And you tilt your hand. There's a there's a Goldilocks point where your hand starts to lift up because of the air that's running over it. That's a Goldilocks point, right? Science is always you know, when you're dealing with science, there's always a, a optimum amount of certain amount of something before anything can change. So there's an optimum amount of CO2 that is, that is, um, that is, uh, um, what do you call it? That's optimum for plants. Now, remember what the scripture says, the most I set it up to where the, the earth is supposed to be overflowing with life, right? Life is supposed to be in abundance within this earth. And the most I set it up to where, see, you know, the, the, the one part carbon, two parts oxygen is supposed to be a major proponent within that particular um, within that particular algorithm. And there's, again, like I said, there's a mathematical number that you can get to that's just boom, that's there. And you can see from this graph over here with this all, all of this CO2 madness, right? With all of this CO2 madness, we're below that point, okay? Mathematically, what we're seeing here is a fulfillment of this particular scripture right here, right? That's a fulfillment of this particular scripture right here. The book of Isaiah, the 14th chapter on the 17th verse, and he made the world as a wilderness, They've made the world as a wilderness. He's like Scar. When you watch The Lion King, you see Scar and Scar takes over everything. And Scar is just so insatiable for power and control that when he takes over everything, everything fucks up. That's the Red Hebrew Edomite, man. That's the Red Hebrew Edomite. That's how he rules. That's how he controls this earth, right? Just insatiable, cannot be satisfied. The book of Habakkuk, the second chapter, comes to mind. And as a direct consequence of the lies. And again, some part of me thinks maybe they already know that. Maybe they understand that. Okay, if we carry on putting the, the C to the O to the 2 out there within the air, life's going to overflow in abundance because there's no a, a shortage of food like they, like they let you believe. Okay, go outside, wait, trolls, test goals, as the, right, at 12 o'clock on a Friday and watch how much food gets dumped. Watch how much food gets dumped. You tell me that there's a food shortage. Okay, the, the most I set it up to where when particular things happen within the earth, right, when there's more activity of people, right, more... Uh, exhaust gases so so to speak is being exploited out there then you was going to have even more life it's just within the algorithm that's what we're seeing within that particular graph but with this esau thing what he's trying to do is say no 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 we don't want life out here we want two edomites out here per you know per uh, uh square a thousand hectares okay that's that's what he wants to set up he wants to dis set up a dystopian nightmare where there's just life in like life not in an abundance life in in, in a scarcity that's Scar from the Lion King. This is Scar. This dude became the ultimate Scar upon the face of the earth. He took control and everything just went down, boy. <laughs> God damn it. Esau, you a motherfucker, man. God damn it. This guy is a fucking terrible ruler. He's got to be taken away. So, so obviously, you can see from the graph, that's where we are today. We're, we're just above the red line. And, and and to me, when I've seen that, I said, yeah, I know what scripture I'm going to couple that with. Isaiah the 14th, chapter on the 17th verse. And he made the world as a wilderness and destroyed cities thereof and opened up the house of the prisoner. Is it is, is, is this not the man that did that? He's not the Red Hebrew Edomite, the man that did that. That's Esau right there to a T. So let's look at this article. Not this article. Let's, let's take a look at this, um, this, this, this video. I'm not going to play it for you. Um, let me see if I can get the title up. So this is called Dr. Patrick Moore, Climate 
and carbon and then catastrophe right there. And, um, you know, um, you can watch that. That's a good watch. And he goes into the science and he goes into everything that we just spoken about. And he goes into much more intricate detail than I could ever remember or dream to, um, to, to remember, but th that, that's a good thing to watch. You know, we, we're the men of the Lord. We ain't supposed to be just taking, um, Esau's word for it. We go and do the investigation, but they make it difficult right now on, on YouTube with the, with the way they set up these videos. You, you can't search this video. Okay. You ain't going to be able to search this video. This ain't going to come up within your, um, within your, what you call it, within your suggestion feeds. Right, that's not going to come up. That's just not how it works within the algorithm anymore. And if you go try Google search this thing, you know, it ain't going to work out for you. Somebody's going to send this video to you. So anyways, if you if you type that in, you should be able to to, to discover it. And, and he, he goes in, right? He goes in. From what I remember, he goes in and he breaks it all down, graphs and graphs and everything. And, and the thing about a real scientist is when you really see a real scientist, really when you go into science, especially theoretical science, um, it's, it's always a question. And the question is going to be questioned until you get to a point where you can't question it anymore. I'm, you know, I'm sorry, I can't put it in any other way. And then you go with that theory, you test it out, you run the numbers, you're like, okay, yeah, that's that's going to be the most, that was the most plausible thing. But now we understand that, that, that uh, of an assurity, that's that's what we were supposed to do. So, 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 yeah, when he, you know, when he says particular things, it makes you think and you ask yourself, well, hold on a minute, what the hell was that all about? I think one of the things that he mentions is the plastic bottles in birds. Right, that, that they're so called found, and the, the birds were eating the plastic. It's like, yo, look, man, the most I didn't make these things ignorant. The most I didn't make the birds ignorant. Okay, right, the, the birds' digestive system doesn't work the same way as a human digestive system works. It's gonna get the gravel. It's gonna get particular things in order for the for the um for the food to be in there to be ground up and digested very well. But that's one of the things he he points out and says, look, you know, that's yeah, there's a plastic problem, but the way they've pushed it out there is is, is madness. It's bullshit. So yeah, um, watch that man. Watch the arguments he makes. And as 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 the men of the Lord, hey, you know, don't don't take don't take don't take my word for it. Right? Counter, you know, make some counterpoints to it. You know, use your brain. This is what we teach you here. This is what you're taught here at Great Milston, first and foremost, so first and foremost with the apostles. Use your brain. Think. Right? What is your mind saying? What's your instinct saying? Okay, go with that idea. Entertain that. Right? Search it out. Okay, you're off, you rebuke yourself. Or you think you got a point. Okay, bring it forth before the elders and let your point be. Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Let, let's let the let brothers go back and forth with your point to see if it's true. Okay, so that's so that's 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 what that's what being a man is all about, man. That's what man being all is all about. Anyways, with that, I'm gonna say all praises unto you by my side. Oshimokohaku, dash double honors unto the apostles of Great Millstone. Honestly, brothers, will be pushing this truth in sincerity. Shalom.